Right. Well, um, looks like we're filling out some uh, agenda and open floor notes. So thank you for that. If uh, everyone has put their name in the attendees, do we have any new introductions today? Anyone who joined the group? Going once, going twice. All right. With that, we don't have anyone who filled out anything on the agenda notes. I know that it is um, an ongoing theme. We have conferences and opportunities to speak and share coming up. So if anyone wants to speak to um, or present on how they're using Kubevert or anything like that, uh, we have resources to help make sure you can spin with up for those things easily. And Also in addition, I think if some new adopters of Keyboard are here, I think we're still looking for people for which which can add in, uh, can fill out this survey from CNCF regarding to users, right? Absolutely, right. We should drop the link for that. Seems like we can directly go to the open floor. I'm going to drop the link for the survey real quick. All right, and then with open floor, it looks like we're starting off with an, uh, an issue. We can go ahead and I'd like to see if we can go through any of the other things real quick before we jump into issues. Um, we're going to do bug scrub here in just a minute. And vert launcher. Is that also an issue? Oh, okay. Hello. Um, well, I would like to ask um, as we as we, as uh, you already may know, we have a client uh, a client in the server on Vert Lan on Vert Launcher and Vert Handler that uh, is uh, communicating via grpc calls so I, want, I would like to ask what would happen when you change add or remove a command or for the old vert launcher versions so to clarify this are you talking about a case where you want to change something in a new vert handler release in the new vert launcher and then you roll it out and Vert Handler would talk to an old Vert, old Vert launcher. Is that your case? Uh, basically, yes. Uh, I, what I mean, I'm talking about, you already have a, you have a few VMs on your cluster and you change the command, one of the commands. Now you upgrade the Vert Handler and you need to still support your old VMs before you're upgrading them. So what would happen? Will it work? Do we need to support such cases? Yeah, we have to uh, consider upgrades. So this is a versioned interface similar to our, our other APIs. Uh, what, um, do you have a specific example? Like we can walk through a few to talk about what would yes. happen. Yeah, of course, please. Um, basically, my my uh, case is uh, a while back. I was uh, presenting here a few issues with uh, the SRV live migration, and I'm working now and following our discussion. I'm, I'm working on changing the logic 
and refactoring it so it will be reconciled. It used to be only on the launcher uh, side. So what I'm, I'm doing now is adding a new command that will, uh, let's call it hot plug uh, SRV interfaces. And, uh, and, the, and basically that's it. I'm adding a new command and uh, I'm trying to figure out what will happen to all the, all the versions of Virt Launcher. So if you want to support hot plugging still on already running VMs when you roll out this update, like it was, did it work before? So do you have to consider the case where VM is started and you want to then suddenly start hot plug something? Does it work right now? Sorry, I think it was a little bit unclear. Um, so when I've started a VM already right now and you come in with your fix, can you uh, can you already without the fix hot plug SROV or is this completely broken at the moment? Currently it's working. I'm, uh, I, I, I started to work on, uh, on uh, if this is answer your question. I okay, so you improve it? Yes, I, okay. it's not really an improvement, but it's a, a, it's a, it's, I'm changing the feature to be how it, uh, with the, the correct practices for covert. For example, I made, uh, uh, for uh, the current implementation is the, the part where you, where you hot plug and unplug the, so when you hot plug the SRV device on the target, used to be currently is a one shot operation, and I and we want to following our discussion a while back ago, we we want to to make it reconcile. So it means basically it means that we move the logic from the launcher to the end. Okay. So in oh, what? So sorry. Can can I? Can I try to summarize it a little bit more abstract because it's just to make sure we are on the same page here. Today, yeah. we have we've have added a few months ago, I don't remember how much, maybe it's a year, I, time is flying here. But we added a new command and the new command was only triggered as part of the finalization of the migration. So that was fine because it can, it, it will always run on a new VM. It cannot never run on an old VM because it's after the migration. So that was no problem with uh, backward compatibility. But now that command moved uh, instead of being in the target uh, pro uh, processing of the migration, it moved in the regular reconcile of the of the not re not relevant to migration. It just always checks if there is a pro if there is a difference and we try to hot plug if there is so it's in the regular reconcile of the virt handler loop so that that in that place you will query both old and new vmis that's it yeah. i don't see a problem if this only occurs during migration because we'll always be in the new vert launcher no, no, the, because now this is what happened before, but now the, the hot plug itself will not happen in the, in the termina in the finalization of the migration. It will have after the migration is considered finalized and it's done. Then the, the next reconcile that will go through the regular flow, not the migration for the regular flow, only then the hot plug will happen. Is it clear? So yeah. you mean th there is now a small gap where in theory you could start with an old handler migration and then it maybe s finalizes no. somehow and then you have the new handler, but that normally no, doesn't. No, no, let me, no, no, let me, let me make it. The code now to hot plug is no longer related to the migration. The code of the hot plug is part of the regular reconcile when there is no migration at all, it's just part of the regular flow where you do the, you recognize, for example, the VMI is running. If the VMI is running, I'm checking if the 
if the if I need to if there is a difference between what I want and what there is in the status, if there is a difference, I will hot plug. And that okay, so, that happens not part of the migration. It's happened mm-hmm. all the time in the record. So, what, what, let me again try to rephrase it in my words that we see that we talk about the same thing. This means that you have now in the Vertender reconciliation another gRPC call which is not there on old Vert launchers. So you start Vertender, and it would immediately try to do a gRPC call or something and fail there. Is that what you try to say? Yes, I, I, yes, because if yes, if there will be a running VMI in old one, it will try to contact it with a new command, and there is no such command on the other side. So. That yeah. should be fine. Uh, we just ignore yep. when the uh, API doesn't exist in the back end. Uh, certainly, there's got to be a way okay. to detect that. So here's what we know. We know that the old vert launcher uh, attempted to do this in a one-shot uh, way. So it would uh, attempt to do this hot plug, replug, whatever we call it um, itself. We know that if um, a BERT launcher does not have that API, that it had that old logic. So we know that it should be okay if it's not implemented. Does that sound accurate? Uh, almost. The problem is that that logic is also in the real time. Though. I mean, the the... The Vitlander recognized that the, the migration almost finished or finished, and then it hot plugs. This is the old Vitlander. Now we wanted to move it to the just to move the that code to the recon, the regular reconcile. But but I guess we can do both. I don't know. Uh, Vert handler tries to. Wait, so what's the uh, current logic with Vert handler then with respects to hot plug? Co- uh, Current logic is that when Virtender reco- uh, finds that, understands that the migration is is over or almost over, it it goes and hot plugs all the hot plugs the host devices and update some time. I don't remember there is a time update not related to the hot plug. This is the two operation that it does and that's it. And then the next time the it will be considered done. Something like that. That's the flow of the, this is the build handle flow of how it handles the migration. So depending on all the details, there are different ways on how to resolve such is compatibilities. Like um, you can just negotiate. Or, uh, so there is already a version which we tend with launch reports. Normally we just add methods there if it's backward compatible, but if it's for whatever, I'm still not entirely sure if it is backward incompatible because I'm really not, yet sure if there are corner cases where it would have to try the hot plug based on reported differences. I'm not fully convinced, but if um, you can, for instance, negotiate an API version on gRPC, like uh, you basically, and that the, the version is already there, you ask the back end what version it implements, and then you can choose the right version and do the right action, for instance. We um, don't think we do that on the Vert Handler Vert Launcher interface at the moment. So I mean, we, I don't, we don't have a version bump there already, but we have that, for instance, in our hot plug interface for uh, not hot plug in our sidecar interface, uh, which I think Petr, who is maybe you know the call, is he there? No, he's not there. But Petr Horacek did back then that on that GRP interface there, bumping it a version and still supporting both. And it would be similar there. But I'm still not 100% sure if we have that case. But that would, for instance, be one possibility. So I think that because you said that, uh, I think based on your, on your input, that if there is no, on the, on the server side, if that, that, is not, that command is not recognized, then it's just ignored. I think if that is the case, then yes, maybe we are fine. Uh, you get an you get an error back something like it's not Im- not implemented or not available. It's not just ignored. So, oh, so we need to. But I think you can. Error. You even get a specific error back where you can typecast to this is is it not supported or so. Yeah, but that that should. I I hope that that will. There is one possibility, right. and the more complex one would be negotiating a different gRPC version, where you have a different API interface. But don't you have all of these um, um, interfaces that are attached and detached in the in the VMI status? 
Um, what do you mean? What do you mean? I mean, how do you make the call for for querying uh, for for asking the vert launcher anything? I, I thought that you would have um, all the all the interfaces, the difference that you are uh, looking for. Wouldn't you have it in the status already? We do have the SRO interfaces in the VMI status. This is this is what you mean? Yeah, but those that are unplugged. Those that are unplugged, we don't have any status, but uh, we do this uh, calculation on the good launcher side. I see. No, but but uh, if you, uh, Radik, if you mean that we do, I mean the code that uh, all is now writing, he checks if the if the if the status has less interface in than the spec, then he will do the hot plug. If he, if they are equal, he will not do the hot plug. So it's only in that case you will send a command to hot plug. Perfect. Uh, but wouldn't this mean that um, it's a new vert launcher that already migrated? No. Uh, yes. It, uh, this is what I'm saying. You know, on if this is where I think it's okay. If we did the migration, and this uh, and the reconcile works there, it will work because the the VM already migrated. It is for sure the new version. But this this in the place that you ask this question and do this. Query it can happen also on VMIs that are not migrated, like all like the existing ones. It will still query it, and if there there will be a difference, like there is no interface for some reason connected, then it would break. It's like an edge case, but it's still valid. You know, do, so. do we get into this edge case? Because from what I from what I know, I don't know if it's a, it's the default. But when you upgrade Vert, Vert Handler, Vert Launcher ports are all also being upgraded, isn't it? No, uh, not immediately. So it works like this, that Vert Handler has to be, comp the, the, the compatibility works like this. The new Vert Handler normally has to be able to communicate with old and new Vert Launchers and is first upgraded. Then Vert Controller gets upgraded and only after Vert Controller is upgraded, new new launchers are created. So. You're right, there is definitely a case, Edward, where you do a migration and then you still get old launchers with a new handler because we have always zero downtime on the API for migrations and so on. I think, so, I think we have enough information now. Yeah. So you, you have to think about compatibility. I guess this is yeah. what you wanted to yeah. hear, right? Yes, I think I think that we we just need to make sure that uh, if there is an error about com that the command does not exist, we can ignore it, and that's it. I think that should since be launcher would do it himself I itself, right? Since the no, since the virt since this is a an old VMI, which which we cannot fix because it, it doesn't have this uh, ability. Yeah, and yet. as far as I understood, it would. In principle, Vert Launcher would try to do the right thing anyway. It may fail due to bugs or so, but it would try it, right? Because it's the old one. It will try it only. No, it will not try ah. it. Vert Launcher, okay. we, it's like gone. It's, uh, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't decide anything. It just needs commands from the Vert Handler. Okay. On migration, it will succeed. So if there is a problem, the solution for the for the user is to migrate the VM. Yeah. All right, uh, I think we have enough information, as I said. We will definitely take in, take in account the backward compatibility. Uh, for my side, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, Eddie, do you have any other questions? No, no, that's, uh, I, I feel like we took too much time. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, jumping in we to the next one, we have uh, Kate's one, two, three testing. Um, you wanna to speak to that? Uh, yeah, sure, hope you can hear me. Mm -hmm. We can hear you. Okay, great. Um, just a quick heads up that we uh, have some test results for the new 123 provider, which has not yet landed in Qbert itself, but it's already available in Qbert CI. So there is a PR 
uh, that um, uh, we are working on currently, um, where the, uh, the the new provider gets added. Um, so the only thing is, uh, you, at, at the moment, you can't use it locally. Because I got the question already, uh, we need to wait until that PR gets added. But yeah, we have some, some storage and network results. And compute lane looks already fine. So uh, no failures on that. And um, teams are already working on that, uh, which is great. But there are two things. Um, one thing is we need to fix the operator lane, uh, which is uh, in the same. Oh, what was that? A glitch in the matrix, I guess. OK. <laughs> OK, so um, and the last thing I wanted to mention is uh, that we should make the check provision of, in the Cupid CI. We should make it uh, required for 123, as the 123 provider is already in there. So um, yeah, I think that's for me. Any questions on that? Sounds great. Looking forward to using 123. Yeah, I think I think we have a couple of flags still in the lane, but uh, I, I think uh, a bit of retesting probably will help. <laughs> so let's see. <laughs> Right. Um, and then, sorry to bump the bug to last, but did someone want to speak to issue 6498, the Golang 117 fails to parse? I guess Petter isn't here. Maybe the person which edited? Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, I want to talk about this issue. So this issue was opened on uh, October 1st by Peter. And since uh, GoLang 1.17, both net uh, parse IT and net uh, parse CIDR rejects leading zeros in the top decimal, decimal notation of uh, IPv4 addresses. Uh, so uh, Kubernetes uh, 1.23 uh, that was released eight days ago is the first one to be compiled with Joe. 1.17. The Kubernetes project have forked the older behavior of Go of these uh, two functions, so they won't break uh, backward compatibility, and they've added the sloppy suffix to these two functions. What we what we have done until now is map the input fields of uh, IP addresses coming from the user, and uh, mapped two places that uh, are validated by uh, net.parseip. One is the DNS config dot name servers of the virtual machine instance pack. And the other is the DHCP option NTP servers. Furthermore, there are uh, several uh, other IP addresses inputs in the vert cattle uh, utility, but they go straight to Kubernetes as far as uh, we know. So what we want to do is, first of all, understand if from a licensing uh, perspective, we can use a Kubernetes fork of a net.parseip uh, and net.parseider. And if we can, we want to upgrade Kubert to go uh, 1.17. We had the meeting with Itamar. He was the last one to do it. He showed us the way and to verify the breaking change to see where it uh, takes effect. And of course, use the uh, newer Kubernetes utils repo, which is the fork of uh, Golang to validate uh, these fields and other places that need uh, this uh, type of handling and add test to check uh, that also after an upgrade, if you have a uh, IP addresses stored in the database or on uh, cache files that we pass them correctly or sloppily. So just for a clarification for me, are you talking about this repo which I am just pasting? Which contains the forked versions? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, this is. Uh, we use many repos from Kubernetes. They are Apache 2. We are Apache 2. There are definitely no licensing issues to expect. That's perfectly fine. There is a license issue there. If you look 
if you look they they got a, an exception from the golan licensing so it, there is an exception there so I'm, the question is is it okay it's 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 odd it's they they added the internal file that implement this from the golan the source sources which has a different license so i don't know what are the implications it's i don't know it's odd just Actually, Peter gave us the hint that uh, there was a thread about it that about this uh, licensing thing. Yeah, let's see. It could be just an MIT or something. Let's see. Yeah, but we don't have to solve it now. So I think the yeah, the, but yeah, the main, first the main glance. Thing is Still, on first glance, it looks like like something like an MIT license, which would be fine too. That's my first thought, but we have to check the text. Then, in this case, good hint. And, then, and, uh, and I think the the main point that uh, Aurel wants uh, wanted to to make, at least I want to make sure we we raise it here so we get feedback, is can we make make this decision to to normalize the the two API entries that we see that we can get as IPs that may be like a lead with a lead zero, can we just normalize them and use the, the all the other places, use the regular uh, uh, parser of Golang 117 and on? Do you understand? Well, I hope you understand what I'm asking. So, so you do not want with with that you mean you basically wherever an api object from the kubernetes api comes in you're normalizing it and then you're using the normal objects is that what you mean no or i'm i'm not objects? touching the i'm not touching the i mean if yes if there is the the two these two values that we get as ips if we get those we normalize this to the not to have leading zero and and that's it maybe there we will use this sloppy stuff but in any other place that is uh, that's internal, we will not we not do it. That's it. Yes, yeah. right. Or else, this is what we said, right? Yes, but still, we we've talked about uh, data that is already there before oh, yeah. a, a potential library, like in cache files or in the etcd that contains these uh, leading zeros because these fields are saved as strings and not as a special uh, yeah. go type. Yeah, so anything that is uh, related to these two fields, this is what we said. If it's saved in a file, in a file internally, we should, we need to treat it as well. Yeah. So I'm still not completely sure I understand it, but if possible, I would probably not want that we change any values which are supplied by users in a in a in a spec field or so if this would be affected status is probably okay if we would trim it if we see it does so that make sense like if i if the user input it for example zero one zero right the address something yeah. zero one zero dot yeah we we internally I'm not talking about touching the spec now, the mm -hmm. the manifest, but internally we we interpret it as ten. And that's it. We need to do it once in the entry point. And we need to do it uh, there and that's it. We and after that we are not expecting anyone to have a zero ten anymore. So it's I, I guess it's like uh, when you marshal or unmarshal, I don't remember the which which one of them is I'm more confused. When you do that, you should get the correct Normalize value. It may work. It's uh, it's hard to decide here on this meeting what's best. It's probably something for a PR. I guess it depends on on what comes okay, up. Okay, so yeah, yeah. So if if someone has any pops any idea, had some bad experience with this. Then any feedback will be nice. Then in the end, yes, there will be a PR, and then probably a discussion will be held. Uh, yeah. Furthermore, if anyone knows about the uh, other 
IP address inputs that uh, are not listed on the issue, we would be happy to know. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, that covers our open floor items. I wanted to actually circle back to introductions. Um, or Raz, do you want to go ahead and speak up? Uh, we can't hear you. You're off mute. Now can you hear me? Now can hear you. Good. Uh, so yeah, my, my name is Or, uh, and I'm uh, involving with the node maintenance operator. So I just uh, joined the group here today, and uh, I'm keen to uh, learn more and involve. Awesome. Thanks for joining. Hello. Hi. Hi. Nice meeting you. And now we're going to go ahead and jump into the R's. And I close that one. All right. Add in a log. Dumping logs. That would be hugely valuable for debugging, in my opinion. Um, yes, uh, this is mine. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to take more time from the, from this meeting. And uh, basically, there are two PRs that I mentioned. If uh, there is an approver that can uh, take a look, I will really appreciate it. This one is already LGTM, and uh, second uh, isn't, but we review it on the last meeting, so I understand if it's not ready yet. But this one is. Should be someone assigned who is. Oh, it's assigned to Petra, who is not active anymore as approver. <laughs> Understand? That's. In such case, it's also helpful. Um, but since Petra isn't, yeah, we should probably ask Petra to move himself to the Emeritus, Emeritus section so that he doesn't get assigned PRs to get approved. But if he wants, he can still. Approve it or assign someone else. Maybe that, yeah. I'll have a look. I'll assign it to me. Thanks. The other one that you said we reviewed last week. Do we need an assigner on that one? So can you repeat, please? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was just saying this is this is the one that you were talk. You said we reviewed last week. Yes, okay. we do. This is the one. Yeah. Um, Roman, do we want to get uh, another signee on that one? You can put me on this. I, I can take a look later. You can just write slash cc and add Vladik and then. Uh, which Vladik one? R with V. Yeah, there it is. Thank you very much. Left it, let's see what we can do. This is Last 
Is, are we are we in the box scrub now or? Um, I was looking to see if there are any other PRs that stand out, or I can skip skip ahead to mailing lists. Yeah, Do, doing the PRs. I mean, yeah. If they're not, if, if no one not mentioned the PRs agenda, explicitly here, okay. um, I think it's better to take other PRs and select offline because it's hard to discuss them here. But okay. issues are good to discuss. Okay, let's do the mailing list again. On that one. Yeah, so this was on Kristen and me to respond there. But this one's basically Yeah, but I think the discussion discussion is going on there already. So So I think I'm not sure when was the last response on this one. Uh, wait, I'm sorry. This is November. I thought I saw. There we go. So that's from yesterday. So discussions are going on. Yeah, and that looks like it's there. Let's see if we have something where no one else. Okay. okay. Hi again. Hi again. <laughs> and a signal meeting. Uh, yeah. Six scale meeting, meeting notes. notes. Yeah. Then... Well, by the way, it's great if others are joining too there. And this was about, yeah. This is about us maintainers having time to be there for the upcoming conference for Kubernetes. That was easy enough. Um, we don't have any bugs on the agenda. Quick plants. Yeah, so here we can go through a few. So the second one, for instance, 6940 has no response yet. Six nine four there. Let me just also go there. I have okay. This is another. Yeah. This is another issue. Regarding to non-default Kubelet yeah. pod tiers, um, which we still do we, not clearly support. Right. Um, there's been a few issues where that was sim linked over. Yeah, uh, I guess we can close this as duplicate and point into the open issues. Yeah, I'll come back and do that. Um, and then. Is this six nine three nine? No, I redid a kind cluster deployment method on one two two twenty two. 
yesterday. I might want to clean leaf on Peria. It's hard. It's hard to some things. There is a back off somewhere. That is what I see. <laughs> There's what? Pardon? Well, what did you say? Oh, there is a back off of where Tandler, a crash loop back off. That's what I see. Hmm. We can ask for more details on the, we can ask for the Tendler logs to see where it is crash looping. Without that, I'm not sure if we can do much. So, no. so I can add trash needs. Let me add the trash needs info label. Okay. Or, or do you want to do it? Yeah, um, great if you do it. Okay. And then slash trash, and then you just write slash trash. I hope I say it correctly. Yeah, with E, trash, and then needs dash information. A dash. Another or yeah, yeah. Perfect. Thirty. Are they talking like um, Mopus integration and stuff? Wait, uh, oh, I'm, I'm on the wrong issue, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, 6930, do VNF support Kubert? Are VNFs compliant to Kubert? Um, I'm guessing virtual network functions, so would that be Mopus? Which works great. Yeah, maybe someone from the networking team wants to answer there? I guess the question is a bit undefined because- Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a little vague. <laughs> I mean, VNF would be just a regular VM um, that has a network function. Discovering differencing disk feature in Kubert project for the purpose of persistent storage for a huge VM cluster. Differing disk is a very effective way to do space. Oh, is this like copy on right? Modifying source code to make differencing disk consistent. So, uh, we have some, yeah, as I said, we have some basic cases, or as she said, um, but um, on shared storage, we are mostly thinking about smart storage like Ceph or so, which has does a lot of these things themselves. That's one of the main reasons. I've just, um, 
handling that at the storage provider layer and not at the yeah. super layer, right? Yeah. Do you want to respond to that one? Mm. Six, nine, two, eight. Someone would have been for the last meeting. All right, and with that, should conclude our meeting for today. Unless any last notes. And definitely um, make your voice heard and share your use case on the survey. And we all look forward to next time. Thanks. Thank you for hosting. Indeed, thank you. Thanks a lot for hosting. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.